Saints of God, saints of God, we are living. We are living in a day and in an age where everyone wants to experience the favor of God. People are flocking to churches all over this country where the teaching is about favor. The preaching is about favor. The singing is about favor. The motivation behind every shout is the favor of God. And when you really think about it, saints of God, I mean, why not? Why not talk about the favor of God? After all, the Bible has a great deal to say about the favor of God. Psalm 5 and 12 says, For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover him with favor as with a shield. The 90th Psalm, verse number 17 says, Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the works of our hands. Proverbs 3 and 33 says, the Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked, but the blessed is the dwelling of the righteous. Toward the scorners he is scornful, but to the humble he gives favor. Psalm 30 and 5 said, for his anger is but for a moment and his favor is for a lifetime. Let the church say favor. <laughs> Listen to me, saints of God. In this more recent age of the church, I've discovered that people are praying for a whole lot of things. I know folk in the church right now, they're praying for possessions, for property, and for portable pieces that propagate pleasure. Y'all praying with me? But you better learn how to ask God for favor. Then you got other folk in the church that are praying for cash, for currency, and for capital. But let me deliver two or three of you all in here this morning that have been praying about money. Favor is better than any amount of money. Are y'all hearing me? Because favor can do for you what money will never be able to do. I recognize money can buy you a brand new house, but favor will get you financing with bad credit. Talk to me, somebody. See, money, 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 money will keep your bills caught up, but favor will keep bread in the box and clothes on the kids while you're between jobs. Talk to me, somebody. Money will get you an appointment to see the best doctor in Memphis, but favor will hear you without a prescription or a procedure. Look at somebody and say, he's talking about favor. Listen, as a matter of fact, I can't speak for anybody else. Let me talk about Chris Davis. I want the favor favor of God. Is there anybody in here that wants to experience God's favor? We the preaching pericope, you all, we have God speaking through the prophet Malachi about the coming of the Messiah. You do recognize that when you come to the book of Malachi, that is the ending of the Old Testament, and we enter into a 400 year period of silence before God ever others another word. We have what is known as the intertestamental period between the Old Testament and the New Testament, and for 400 years God didn't say anything, but before God started talking, the last thing he wanted to talk about was the coming of the Messiah. Y'all praying with me. He reminds the people that he still has a desire to bless them because no matter what they've done, no matter how bad they've messed up, no matter how bad they've been, no matter how much they strayed, he is still their father. And any, like any good parent, he still wants to bless his children. Hello, somebody. Now, when you read the verses that precede the text, God lets them know, watch this now, that the only reason he has not destroyed them is because he has made a promise and the promise has not yet been fulfilled. God lets them know through the prophet Malachi that he wants to bless them. He plans to bless them. He's promised to bless them. He can bless them. He's able to bless them, but he cannot do it. He will not do it in their current condition. God help me preach. God wants them to know that they're not ready to be blessed because they've not kept his commandments. Are y'all still with me? The, the Bible said they've chosen a lifestyle of sin. They have knowingly violated their covenant relationship with God, and yet here God is begging with them, pleading with them to get right, to do right, to be right because he still wants to bless them. Let me say it again. Here you've got God pleading with the folk to get right, to do right, and to be right because he still wants to bless them. God is pleading with them to get right, to do right, and to be right because he still wants to bless them. Is there anybody here besides Chris Davis that's thankful that God just keeps on pleading with you to get right, to be right, and to do right because he still wants to bless you. I wish I had somebody. For God so loved the world. It says for God so loved the world. It didn't say for God so loved perfect folk. It says for God so loved the world. Can I tell you what that means? That means God loves harlots, hustlers, and hellions. That means that God loves backsliders, backbiters, and backstabbers. That means that God loves cheaters, chumps, and church folk. Anybody thankful that God still loves you? Get the picture, get the picture. When you read the entire chapter, 
The focus of Malachi's message, you all, has been on getting the people ready for the coming of the Messiah. That is the physical embodiment of the manifested presence of the Holy God of Israel in the person and form of Christ Jesus. And with his coming, they would experience the power and presence of God in a way and at a level that they had never experienced it before. Are y'all still praying with me? So everyone who was listening now knows that God has sent this prophet to prepare them for the arrival of the Christ. They did not know that God was getting ready to be silent for the next 400 years. All they knew was is that God had sent a prophet by the name of Malachi to talk to them about what it means to be ready for the coming of the Messiah. Every word that the prophet had spoken up to this point is clearly about them being prepared for the forthcoming presence of God. And all of a sudden, you are in the middle of a proclamation about being ready for the arrival of the Messiah. God says to them, y'all ain't ready. God has sent a prophet to say to them, this is what you got to do to get ready for my coming. And all of a sudden, God says to them, y'all ain't ready. He says, you are not ready until you return back to me. Are y'all praying with me? Now, God says, you are not ready to witness the return of the Messiah until you first come back to me. They, in turn, respond to God, well, God, if we're not ready, how do we get ready? What do we have to do to return to you in order to be ready for the coming of the Messiah? Now watch this. When they ask God a question, how do we return? God responds to their question with a question, will a man rob God? Now I can't speak for them, but I know this. When I ask you a question and you answer with a question, I feel some kind of way. Because I didn't ask you a question to get another question. I asked you a question because I wanted to answer. But since Chris is Chris and God is God, God can do what he wants to do. I wish I had somebody. God, they want to know, God, what must we do to be ready for the coming of your son? God turned around and said, will a man rob God? Don't miss this now. They asked, how do we return to you so we can be ready to receive the blessing? He responds to with a question that seems to have nothing to do with that question. They want to know, what do we have to do to see you? And he responds by calling them thieves. He said, you want to talk about returning to me? He said, let's first talk about how you robbed me. Come on, talk to me, somebody. And watch this now, watch this now, watch this now. Robbery is not something that's done by accident. Oh, no, you don't accidentally rob nobody. Come on, talk to me now. No, 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 no. When you rob somebody, you do that deliberately. You do that with intentionality. I mean, it takes some forethought to be a thief. I wish I had somebody. I mean, you got to watch them. You got to stake the place out. You got to find out when they going to be gone, how much time you got to get in and get out. God said, no, it ain't no accident. When you rob somebody, you do that on purpose. I wish I had somebody. What the deck says, he says, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Now, in order to get this, you have to understand the use of the definite article A in the original Hebrew language. You see, when the text says a blessing, it does not mean one blessing or a single blessing. Are you hearing me? It mean, a blessing means a particular or specific thing that God wants to pour out on you. There has to be a specific blessing that God wants to give you and give me that we will not have room enough to receive. Are y'all hearing me? God says, I want to give you a blessing. God says, I want to give you a blessing. Are you hearing me? Now, I know it can't be a car. Because even if I ain't got a garage, I can park it on the street. I know it can't be money because no matter how much you give me, I can spend it. I wish I had somebody. I know it can't be a house because, listen, even if I got to take two or three of you all in, I can fill up a house. I wish I had somebody. So it cannot be cash. It cannot be a crib. It cannot be a car. So what is it that God wants to give me that I will not have room enough to receive? Are y'all watching? Are y'all praying with me now? God says, when you give to me, I'll give back to you. But he says, I will not give back to you an equal amount. God knows nothing at all about quid pro quo. See, that's Latin and legal for one thing is contingent upon another. Instead, God practices, I shall supply. That's biblical and spiritual for you can't beat God given no matter how you try. I wish I had somebody. He says, when you give to me, he says, I'll give back to you a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. I had to think about that thing, Pastor Moore. I had to pray about that thing. I said, God, if it ain't a new car, if it ain't a new house, if it ain't some more money, if it ain't a new wardrobe, what is it that you can give me that I won't be able to receive all of it? Yes, sir. I prayed about that thing, baby. Uh -huh. I thought about that thing. And then it suddenly dawned on me. The only thing that God can give me that I can't be able to contain it all is more of himself. I wish I had somebody.